So you do straight off of the DevNet Associate book, right? So that should be coming out momentarily, right? But yep. just like everyone else in this call, you're you're an engineer that's been in this field for a long time, right? So, yeah. So can you walk me through your thoughts on DevNet, and, and especially you know coming mm -hmm. from someone who's been in the industry a long time and know what other people are thinking about you know trying to take that step or trying to take that next step towards uh programmability can you give us some thoughts on that and yeah absolutely and, and you know I, I have these talks a lot because you know i i present for for work not only just Cisco live but like I, I present to customers and do all these different things uh, about the adoption of programmability and automation and if you you know one of the things that i i love i start off almost every single talk with is that it's different right but it's also the same so you, thinking about like how you've traditionally done stuff with CLI in the past, you're hammering away on commands to get it to do something, right? Automation and programmability is just a different mechanism. It's like using the GUI on a box. It still translates down to doing something that you're used to doing on the command line. It's just a different avenue of doing it. Um, and that the biggest thing that I think when I talk to customers and, and partners, everybody out there really, the biggest fear that I see is that people are afraid that they're going to get automated out of a job. Right. They think they're going to get automated out of a job for one, or it's such a daunting learning curve that who has time? Who yeah, everybody has day jobs, right? How do you how do you how do you even start, right? And one of the things I absolutely love and adore about DevNet is the fact that you can and I say this in a lot of the interviews that you you can literally start there with I have never touched this before in my life and and leave proficient at it, right? Because the way that these, these videos and these, these things are created is it's to show you that, you know, you can, you can start off with minimum knowledge. You just know the knowledge of what you already know, like right? whether it's collaboration, whether it's routing and switching, whatever it is, they help you translate that into terms and, and to what technologies you need to know from a programmability perspective. And I think nobody else has that. I mean, I know there's like, there's all these other, um, there's all these other companies that have like courses for programmability, and I know a lot of these folks, right? But from a community perspective, and I think it goes back to that, we have, I mean, so we, we hit over 600,000 people at Cisco Live US, so now we're probably somewhat higher than that, right? Of, of folks who want to learn and want to learn from each other and do it in a group setting where nobody's judging you. Nobody's judging, you, you know, oh, this person's stupid. They don't know what, they don't know what an API or basic authentication is for an API. Like uh, five months ago, that person didn't know, right? Or the people who were, a lot of the people who are teaching this didn't know that that long ago, right? We're all on this journey to learn what this stuff means together. How did you start? How did you start? Because at, at some point, you didn't have, you know, the basic knowledge of, I mean, I'm pretty sure as a, you know, a CCIE service provider, you know, you, you didn't know, you know API, right? Not everything is, is API driven. So how did you, how did you, you know, get, get up to speed? Hey, you want to write a book? <laughs> that was it. That was how I really started it. You know, I mean, and, and being completely transparent, and honest. You know, it's like um, I was asked if I want if I wanted to participate in writing that book, and I, I, I was like, well, I, I kind of understand some of these things. I know it from you know from a from how to use the tool, but I don't know it for how to interact it from a program a programmatic way. But you know, through through the years, you learn things like what HTTP calls are and get and, and puts and stuff like that, just doing web stuff and making websites and stuff over the years. So I learned that sort of stuff. And honestly, that helps, you, you know, because I think what I did was I took I took a lot of these examples, uh, and at the time it was APIC EM, and I started scouring through the frickin' API, API documentation, which is not the best, right? And um, and I just started trying. And I think when you, when you hear a lot of, you hear a common theme from, I mean, you know, Hank Preston, Stuart Clark, all these people from DevNet, all the people in industry, just start coding you here a lot, right? Just start. And the reason being is nobody, a lot of people don't know, right? And when I, you know, a lot of people, you know, I have, I have a bunch of Raspberry Pis behind me, okay? I've never logged into a Raspberry Pi. I feel like a complete dweeb, right? I've never logged into them. I know you can, a lot of people start there to learning programmability in a very easy way. I went the other way. I went started with freaking APKM and stuff like that. And now I have, I have Raspberry, Pi, Raspberry Pis that I got to try to figure out how to get into to do something cool with, you know? Um, but just starting, you know, and leveraging information you already know. You already know networking. So then when you start looking at how these things are, you know, it's just like anything else. 
If I log into a router, I have to authenticate if it's set up properly. I should have to authenticate to do anything. Same thing as if I log into the GUI for a DNA, Cisco DNA Center, or if I log into the GUI on an actual router itself or switch, I still have to authenticate. Same thing goes when you do API calls, right? So if you if you piece it up, take it apart and learn it manageable chunks, like first I have to I have to even access it. I have to even get how do I even get to it? And and you start doing those things. That's how I learned. I basically took it apart and said, okay, well I got to do this first. Oh well, that did that. Okay, and it was kind of. It was kind of liberating because nobody really knew what the heck was going on and we just started going down that path. And it helped that Ryan knew a lot of this stuff already with the stuff for Nexus because he did a lot of it for ACI and Nexus and NXOS or whatever. So I, I would ping him and we, we'd be on calls, he'd be showing me things and next thing you know, I'm like, oh, okay, now I see how it fits to APIC EM. Now I see how it fits with Postman. Now I see how it fits with NSO. So I just started doing that stuff and then writing the book. So the way I write is the same way I learn, right? Like I teach people to say, look, you've never touched this before. You get through this chapter, you're going to be able to religiously do that over and over and over again, and we'll we'll go through it together, right? Because I think that's kind of the key is anybody in their and in, in their in their family member can write a book that's that thick, right? But if you write a book that thick on network programmability, especially five years ago, and hand it to somebody, they're going to freak out because they're already worried about, is this gonna take my job away? How much of this stuff do I have to learn? Do I have to be a, an actual developer from a like software developer, like I'm gonna go and develop SAP, I gotta learn. So people, they, their, their anxiety uh, on these things, it just, it goes through the roof. You hand them a book that thick, they're gone. They're already yeah. mostly gone, you know? So I our book was, think, you know. I, th I think well, this I is an interesting point though, because because uh, having come from the network engineering side of things, what you've done is approached it as a network engineer and you've come in and gone, right, I know what I need to do to build this thing. And so what I'm going to do instead of doing it this way, I'm going to I'm going to go about it program programmably and, and work out how to do it. What the DevNet stuff tends to do, and, and I'm thinking of the DevNet certification tracks and stuff now, is almost yeah. flips that on its head, right? Because it's it's about becoming a developer with a network interest. And so you're you're yeah. you're you're approaching it from almost the, the opposite end of, of of here's the end state, and this is how you then apply that to to networks. And I think this is an interesting point that people a sort of grappling with at the moment. I mean, obviously, there's been this mad rush for the for the DevNet certifications because of yeah. um, the DevNet 500 and all the rest of it, and that's fantastic. But it's very much a developer certification with networking, and you've got right. then the, the new versions yeah. of the of the NA and the MP and and the IE coming that are yeah. going to be yeah. networking certs with automation embedded in it, and I think. Yeah. It's an interesting, I think we've got, we're in interesting times because I know, again, you talk to the guys on the call here, some, uh, well, we've all, we're all certainly interested in the DevNet Associate because it gives you that, yeah. that fundamental development approach and yet we're all networkers. And so naturally we're more likely to approach it from that, how do I, how do I automate the network things, you know, and, and I think that sure. that's going to be an interesting um a thing to, to play out i think so uh, going I, back yeah. oh, go ahead. Uh, so i was gonna say like so with a lot you know you talk about a book like that thick right is that you know it's kind of like where do you where do you start it's with automation it's like what do you need to well you can automate anything well great yeah. how do i practice what what should i do like what should i do with that raspberry yeah. pi to your point or whatever right which i came yeah. up on our, our call the other day was the pies but um you know kind of going through going through that and taking it to the chunks so one one of the things that that i want to kind of get your input on is when you're writing one of the things that's different about the automation is all the different kind of tools right and some of them yeah. are kind of cisco like postman right yeah. How do you integrate that into the the book and the training without it becoming like kind of like a postman class or there's so many of them right you don't want to be locked yeah. under that tool yeah. yeah, so so essentially what I did was um, when you when you think about I mean for the Devon Associate I also did it for uh, the the CCMP CCIE Encore book right because there's programmability in there and I, my, my approach was pretty much identical for both books was that you know in I, I explain it and you know here's how you would do it normally whether whether it's command line or whether it's done through a GUI here's here's what you're doing 
they, and you know, like say, for example, Cisco DNA Center, here's how you would get an inventory. You click devices, inventory, see there's five or eight devices or whatever, how many devices, you can see all that information, right? Then I would do the same thing via, uh, in the GUI itself, you can go and click and look at the APIs, and then right. I would show that process where you can see all that, and that's with some of the video stuff we're working on. Is it? You can see that, and then the next step would be, okay, well, that's, that's how you do it on the tool, how you look at the APIs on the tool. Now let's talk about off-box, right? So Postman, I can do an individual API call directly to it and get that same information. So that's how I approach it. Like, here I logged into the GUI, here I clicked on inventory. Now here I, I have Postman, I do an API call with my authentication credentials to get authenticated. Then I do that next API call, and if you notice, and I even say this in the book, if you notice it's the exact same URL, it's the exact same API is that we used in the, that it showed in the GUI, we're using it now in, in Postman, right? And then we do that, show the inventory, talk about it, and then I take it a step further and I say, okay, everybody talks about Python. Now, you can do a lot in Python. If you can make full-on applications in Python and all that, that's not what most of us are trying to do, right? Most of us are trying to do those steps that we just talked about in an automated way. So then what I did, I did the same thing, okay? Well, here's a Python script, and I ripped the part of Python script for, for authenticating the DNA center as well as pulling the inventory, and I put lines next to each one and explain what every single line in that Python script did, right? And the whole reason there is now when you look at it, now if you look at that Python script, like, oh, that's the same URL that we used in Postman. Oh, okay, here's the username and password that I put in in Postman for that, okay? And it's the same username and password that I did in the GUI on the instant demo that's always on that I can practice on. So then there's a whole flow of basically we start with this is what the tool does, this is what, what you know, where you get this information, and then we go into it from a programmatic approach that says, Here, here's Postman, here's Python, rip it all apart, you can see everything and how it works. And I think and that's, that takes all, that's, there's just no mystery anymore, right? It takes all yeah. the, what the heck is this thing gonna do? Literally, this is exactly what it's doing. It's just doing it now via a text file that's a Python script versus you physically webbed and logged into the GUI and then clicked inventory. Right. And but that from that, from a, I think that really, a, really helps people because it's simple. For, from a network engineer's perspective, though, that's that's the thing again, isn't it? Exactly, right? You're, you're doing it as a as a task you would do as a person logging into the to the device because you know that that's the thing you need to do. Right. Take that and you automate that thing. And what that then gives you right. the option is to do it again and again and again across a whole yeah. load of devices or whatever that might be. But you've broken it down into those small tasks. So, sorry, Rick. Okay. Oh, was Rick saying something? No, 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 I was, I was just agreeing. I'm... <laughs> yeah, so, so, <laughs> disagree. So, so even, even going back to that same point, right? I mean, I, I did a panel, a couple panels with Susie at uh, Cisco Live US there. And one of the things we talked about was, you know, these new certifications and how they're, they're crucial and important for people to be able to up their skill set and learn new things. And I think, I think that one, the one thing that I, I coined, and I, I'm super proud of this, I said, you know, we're not, we're not network engineers anymore. We're not application developers. We're network developers, right? The whole stream of those certifications are meant to interact somehow with a networking device, software, or object, right? So in my mind, you know, if you went to school for software development and you know what, like, all oh, you know, waterfall, agile, all these weird, you know, if you know what all that, the, 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 the continuous process and you know, CICD and all these things, if you know what all this stuff means and you don't know networking, right, you're going to look at that from a completely different angle. You're going to understand when you learn the intro to networking stuff in the CC uh, or CCNA, geez, I'm sorry, in the, uh, it could be CCNA too, I guess, right? In the, in the DevNet Associate, right? You, you know, you might have 80% software development and 20% networking, but when you take that exam, you're going to know the 80%, you're going to learn the 20%. Well, then guess what? When you go over to the CCNA, you know 20 of the 80% that you're going to need to know, and you already know that that other 20% is software development skills, right? So I think it's, it's is it by is it perfect? Maybe, maybe not. You know, I, I think I think we're gonna have to start with that flip to eventually get to the point because if you think about it, how many people out there can know both, right? If there, it's it's a, it, if you were out to look for the perfect candidate out there and you're hiring somebody, you want somebody who has software development skills and somebody who's a network engineer, right? You want them to be able to do both. And I think we have to build that. 
because there's going to be so many people that are on the software development side, so many people on the networking engineer side that we need to, we kind of need to merge that together. And, and instead of it being like a unicorn that we can't find, you know, because it doesn't exist, I think this is going to be the mechanism that brings all these different pieces together so you have that diversity skill set where you can kind of basically walk in, you know, to either environment and still be able to have intelligent conversations and know what is kind of going on. So I, we'll I see. Think, I think that's what's interesting about the three products, right? Is that even though they're separate, right? You've got a little bit of modules in all the new blueprints from the other side, right? Yeah. And and you made a comment earlier about you know Cisco supporting a community. I, I don't see that anywhere else, right? And the dev, you know, DevNet yeah. a lot with VMware and and you know other certifications from other places. They're not doing a DevNet type community number no. one, but also certification and backing behind that community, right? And that's right. what I think is key. Wait a minute. I think, I, well, from that perspective, let me just, you know, give you, I, I, I see that, but it's coming from different angles, right? Because I feel that the system engineers, it, it, at the end of the day, this path actually in a, in, in, it will, will, will merge with other paths. For example, the way GCP is actually going about training up developers and so forth to be able to use, you know, Google's products, the way AWS does it, the way Red Hat does it, right? Because Red Hat right now is in the core of pretty much all this software SDN network. So I think that Cisco brings the network engineering into play. And everything Cisco's doing, other vendors are actually riding on the back of as well. So I think that, and getting back to Jason's point, I, I don't think that you're going to have a person that knows that, that this is network engineer and a uh, developer just like that. I think that we're going to have a new position, right? I think that just having a person that knows development is not going to be something that's efficient and having a person that knows networking is not going to be efficient i think it's going to be something different i mean in in software development if you keep it out there's not many app development right app development is probably the biggest need for any company um global there's not many developers out there so you add that demand up with um you know the demand to know you know sdn or or to be able to know SD, uh, networking and, and development, there is going to be a huge space of need in this, you know, in, in, in this ecosystem that, that is going to be very hard to fill. So I think it's going to be a whole new skill sets going to be needed, right? You know, I think, I th I think what you've got, if, what you've got is an evolution, right? Is, is, is evolution. As, as, as you bring all of those elements together. So, so some of this stuff that we used to do, oh, God, what's, what's the T-shirt now? So it's involved and evolved. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, that's, well, that's the point. And, 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 it's, it's it's exactly it. But go back to you missed it yourself, uh, Jason. I mean, go back to when you were talking about Novell and look at that the Windows three point one. Those skill sets yeah. back at that time weren't never, never near. Wasn't a guy. It was a guy who was willing to run cable for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't a guy who knew really. Your router had issues, and you know this. Back on, uh, mm -hmm. on Cisco ten code. Everything was above. So the most you had to do was to was to reboot the router, reboot the router, call tech. That was it. That was network engineering skill sets. And then we start evolving the CCNA, and then to the point where CCIEs were making presidential money. You know what I mean? We're all sharing money. <laughs> <laughs> I think now is we're, we're at another evolutionary point that I really think you know in five to six years you're going to be looking for just. A whole new skill set. Maybe, maybe never engineers. I'm saying never engineers that write apps and you know and write code for you know AWS. You know, it's, it's it's application deployment. It's it's um it's how people use those applications and how you yeah. assure assure them and and those those things. Um, and yes, there'll be elements of. Uh, cloud there'll be elements of app dev there'll be elements of networking and so on and so forth in there you'll still have guys who are uh, who are building the the networks at the sort of infrastructure layer right but th yeah. those will be that will be commodity by that stage right and so now what you're doing is you're you're looking at what what is the next layer on top of that that you can bring value from and th and that's yeah and i think going to Derek's point go yeah i think go going back to Derek's point right it, it's like we're laying the groundwork now 
for those next level, whatever they are, network developers or whatever they're going to be, because we're we're in that influx. So like, I mean, Cisco doesn't change the certifications very often for it to be. This is a, February twenty fourth was a massive thing, right? And that that's going to be the foundation, I think, for those next level, next generation, evolved engineers and developers and stuff. Because you know, how many companies are using lean? You know, I have lean IT. They you know, only have one or two, three people maybe running global networks, and they they're you know they're doing more with less. They're going to keep, and I, and, I, and, I, and I don't mean to sound jaded or, or, or upset, but it, they're going to keep trying to get you to do more. I mean, it's, it's going to happen, right? I mean, you're going to just have to continue to learn and do more and evolve your skill set to be more useful and beneficial for the business at that time. And I think this is like the, the perfect way to like lay the groundwork that has, and to Rick's point, you know, have a little bit of each certification kind of, you know, Overlap like that, I think, is, is perfect because it lets you dip your toe in what you may want to pursue in that path, in that direction or path, right? Well, automation doesn't necessarily mean less people. And that's the one thing I've been trying to tell people because right now, as we speak, edge compute, computing is becoming a real thing, right? And with edge computing comes the need for what? More developers, more more networks, more network engineering. Connectivity. Well, I mean, you, you look at you, you look at what voice went through. I mean, that's where I got my first IE. It was in the voice stuff. And I wasn't an yeah, old yeah. X guy, but it was the, a lot of the same mentality of my job's going away because now it's going to the network team. And that just, that, I understood that fear right in that mindset, but it just wasn't reality because we actually have more voice guys today because the voice just got more complex. Businesses that had didn't have any kind of ACD or IVR now have full blown IVRs, you know, and then you now you've got collab, right? Voice just when into collab, which is video, everything, right? Which which of course is all playing out right now, right? Is and become probably the most important thing you can do over the network. So, oh yeah, well, look what we're doing it right is, now, right? It is what it is, right? Yeah, exactly. And, guys, and I think guys, the, the demand goes up from like an application perspective. Think about the internet, right? How how far that's come. That's why we now have this whole Internet of the Future thing with Cisco, and because everything is riding over that now. Well, that means everything's riding over a network. Everything's going to be voice. Everything's gonna, we're gonna, all of the stuff is just going to amplify. We need more people to be able to do each, right? It's you know, I think it's all going to grow. But what we do, like, to Derek's point, is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to now. Such an exciting time to be doing this. Such an exciting time. Yeah, That's amazing, guys. I'm gonna wind us in. We've been going. I can't believe this now. A good hour, hour and a half, nearly. Um, oh, man, I'm sorry. I no, 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 no. <laughs> no what? You know, what? I, I, and I was only thinking, Jason, we've not talked about, I wanted to talk about China, I wanted to talk about Metal DevOps and all of the other community stuff you're doing and all of the rest of it, because that's really interesting. We are going to get you back you. on. We're going to get you back right. on for a part two for that, for sure. So um, I think is a, I'm blown away. I've got so many things going through my head now that I'm going to have to sort of uh, go and sit in a, in a quiet corner somewhere and, and contemplate um, <laughs> contemplate my future, I think. But uh, guys, is there anything else um, you want to close with, or should we just let this good man go? No, I'm Jason. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you guys mate. for having. Me. Uh, listen, Jason. I'd love to do this more often, man. Well, we'll while while everyone's got a little bit of downtime, maybe that's something we can take advantage of. Thank you very very much for your time, mate. It's uh, it's been a, a, an absolute blast, and we will definitely be doing this again. Um, peace out, I guess. Yes, thank you all. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Cheers. Stay Cheers, safe. Guys. Thank you, Jason. Thanks. Thank you all so much. Let me know if you need anything, and uh, I'll look forward to talking to you guys soon. We're going to do this again. Appreciate it. Jason, 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 that was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Thanks, mate. Stay safe out there. Appreciate it. Cheers. Bye. Right. We'll see you. Thank mm -hmm. you.